With the release of brand new operating systems for the Mac and the iPad, which is the iPad OS and the Mac OS Catalina, you can now use your iPad as a secondary display. But what's more interesting is you can also use it as a secondary input device, meaning now you can use your Apple Pencil as an input. Does that mean we can also use it as a graphic tablet? Well, of course you can. But the real question is how to do it. Also, is it going to be better than a Wacom tablet? Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. We're going to find it all. So without any further ado, let's get started. Step one, make sure that you've upgraded to the latest Mac OS Catalina on your MacBook and the iPad OS in your iPad. Step number two, make sure that you have signed in to the iCloud in both of these devices using the same Apple ID. Now, step number three, turn on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on both of these devices. So on my iPad, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi is turned on, even on my MacBook as well, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The next thing you need to do is to click on this button. The AirPlay icon will change into this iPad icon. You can click on that and then click on your iPad name. If you don't see this icon, you can also go to your system preferences right there. Click on that gear icon, system preferences. And inside of that, click on sidecar. You can connect to, you can select device, it's the exact same thing. And if you open through this method, there are other options as well. Show sidebar, show touch bar, you can turn it off and on and play with all of these settings. So it's exactly the same thing as clicking this icon and connecting to your iPad. So I'm gonna close it and click on this one and click on Mesh's iPad. It should be connected. Now your iPad is being used as a secondary display. You can drag your Photoshop or any other application to your iPad very easily, just like that. And if you want it full screen, you can do that too. Just click on the full screen button right there. And there you have your Photoshop in your iPad. Now you can take your Apple Pencil and use it as a secondary input device. So let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon right there and let's choose curves, one of my favorites. Now you can adjust it right from here. Isn't that amazing? Let's add a little blue to the shadows. Click on this drop down and let's go ahead and choose blue and just take it up from here and take it down from the highlights. Have a look, isn't that interesting? Also, if you want, you can drag this image to this screen. Actually, for that, you need to use the mouse because I cannot take my Apple Pencil across this border. So I'm just gonna click and drag it and drop it right there. Now you're using the tools in here and the image is right there. So you can reopen curves again and adjust it while look at the original image right there. So you can have different tools open in your iPad and the image right there. However, if you just wanna paint over the image, you can also do this. So let's go ahead and drag the image back to the iPad and drag the entire Photoshop to the main screen. Now, whenever you want to paint over this one, you can come back to the iPad and whenever you want to play with the tools or change sliders, you can do in your MacBook screen. So I can take the brush, right? Create a brand new layer and let's start painting on this one. I can easily do that. If you want to change the color, let's change it to white, hit OK and simply paint over it. So this way you can customize your own workspace. So you can have your images here, maybe your curves adjustment layer over to your iPad, something like that. Let's make the image a little smaller and then bring the properties right here. You can also bring the brushes at the bottom by going to window and then brush settings. And there you go. Let's just drag it and drop it over to your iPad. So this creates a very nice painting workspace for you. So that's how you can use your iPad not only as a secondary display, but also as a secondary input device. Now I know, have a look at it. It still has some glitches. Now the real question is, will it replace my large Wacom tablet? Well, if you ask me for my professional work, no, not at all. Here's why. First of all, the software is very, very new. So there is meant to be a lot of bugs. Even when I was connecting the Apple Pencil, something weird happened. And also one time when I was trying to record the screen, it just stopped for no reason. So there are bugs. Of course, it's new, so we can expect that. Number two is it cannot move from one screen to another. So let's say you wanna move the cursor from one display to the other. The Apple Pencil can reach only up to the border and it cannot go beyond that. With a Wacom tablet, 
just like this with which doesn't have any display you can actually move between different screens even if you have three screens three displays that you're working on you can divide your wacom tablet to three displays you can get a bigger wacom tablet you can also do it in a small one and easily move through them with the help of your stylus or whatever you call it wacom pen all right now of course there is pressure sensitivity both in wacom and ipad but in my opinion the pressure sensitivity on a wacom is way superior now i'm not saying it's not a great feature it's an amazing feature that apple has put up and i thank apple for doing this however i personally am not going to make the switch to this feature i still am going to use my wacom tablet as my daily driver and separate monitors actual monitors as my secondary displays and there are lots of reasons for doing that now if i'm not personally making the switch there is no point in me hyping up this feature as amazing or great right you get the point i don't want to influence you in the wrong way i'm going to tell you what i use now the problem the only problem with this feature is that first of all it will only work with apple devices so i use windows as my daily driver and i understand what apple is trying to do over here because they don't want to break people away from the ecosystem i totally get it however i use windows as my daily driver because my mid 2017 macbook pro cannot handle 4k videos in premiere pro and i edit a lot of 4k videos so you know i see no use of doing that now here's the most important thing which we should be thinking about if you do have an ipad you should definitely be taking advantage of this amazing feature it's totally cool however if you do not have an ipad and you're considering to buy it as a graphic tablet well then you should go get a wacom or something similar because you can buy something much much better that will give you much better results for one fourth the price of an ipad even maybe one fifth right if you want a tablet with display you can get that too there are lots available in the market if you are considering to buy an ipad as a secondary display get a display you can buy a huge 4k display for half the price of an ipad other than those two reasons if you want to buy buy an ipad go ahead go buy an ipad that's your money your decision maybe your re reasons however but for these reasons i think it's not worth buying an ipad for a graphic tablet or a secondary display alone if you're considering it for other applications it's a great device so that's all for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials i would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on patreon and helping keep pix imperfect free for everybody forever thanks so much for all your support thank you for watching i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.